Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be talking about a potential future matchup in the UFC's heavyweight division. So, you know, this past weekend or this past weekend's fight, there was UFC 229 headlined by Khabib versus McGregor. That super fight right there, that big money fight because of McGregor versus Khabib and the whole grudge match. But also on that card was a heavyweight matchup, but actually an important heavyweight matchup between Alexander Volkov and Derek Lewis, two top five heavyweights. They're in a division that needs new um, contenders. Stipe is coming off that loss, but he still wants that rematch with Daniel Cormier. But this matchup was a fight that potentially could call like pretty much that next challenger that probably would leak, could leapfrog Stipe Maocic if they had a good enough performance. And I think the winner of that fight actually put on a good enough performance to leapfrog Stipe Maocic now. So that fight played out with like Alexander Volkov dominating the whole fight, except for maybe like 30 seconds of the fight where Derrick Lewis got like was able to reverse and get on top of him at one point to the end of the second round. And then that last 10 seconds of the third round where, or the last 10, 15 seconds of the third round where um, Derek Lewis landed that big shot, dropped out of that ball off, and finished him with ground and pound. And he had one of the, the most talked about performances of the night behind, like pretty much the second most talked about performance of the night behind um, McGregor, Khabib versus McGregor. And probably in reality, his fight was the most exciting fight on the car, at least for, not for how it was like close the fight was, but for the comeback performance by Derek Lewis. Because, um, Pettis versus our, um, Ferguson versus Pettis was a more um, back and forth type fight. Whereas um, you got that more emphatic type of victory from Derek Lewis where he came from behind and got got that victory at the buzzer like he typically does. He always get those buzz, buzzer beating knockouts. He got that again. And over a future, or not even a future contender, like a pretty much a person who's supposed to be seen as the next title challenger and probably would have got a title shot if not for the Derek Lewis, I mean not for the Derek Lewis, for the Daniel Cormier versus Stephen Maochik fight or the Miochik versus Cormier super fight. Um, Alexander Volko probably would have gotten a title shot or maybe it would have been Curtis Blades but Curtis Blades and Alexander Volko were seen as the, the new faces of the heavyweight division or new talent in the heavyweight division trying to make a name for themselves and they both were in good positions and Volkov was in probably a little bit ahead of a little bit ahead of um, Curtis Blades so it looked like he was going to get the title shot but because of that he kind of had to take one more fight against Derek Lewis and he probably even had to take the fight but I guess he's wanted to stay active but the fight didn't play out to his favor. He was riding a good streak. But Derek Lewis ended up all that in just 15 seconds, changed the whole course of his trajectory and just, I think, leapfrogged him. Like I said, one of the biggest fights of the night, pretty much the second most talked about fight of the night for the fight itself and for Derek Lewis' post-fight speech with all my balls high and stuff. Had everybody talking. It was all over social media, still on social media. Every time I get on my timeline, I see it at least a couple times and maybe on different accounts. So getting all these different accounts posting and getting thousands and thousands and 10k 30k retweets it's like crazy and all these views millions of views so it got millions of views on the night and it's still getting millions of views just off of getting circulated around the internet and being quoted and posting a video so Derry lewis kind of absorbed some of that mainstream light from the main event and he pretty much took a lot of attention so a lot of attention is going to be on on i mean he's not gonna become like no mcgregor or no big pay-per-view star off of it but he's certainly going to have more attention in, on him than maybe, say, Stipe versus Cormier. Because Stipe versus Cormier, that's more, you know, some mainstream attention on that because the champion versus champion. People always get excited for champion versus champion. The mainstream people really don't care too much about all of that. They care more about um, the, what's people, what are people talking about. People are not really talking about Cormier versus Miocic, even though it was a good fight and it was this and that. But the mainstream people still don't really care too much about that matchup. I think... A uh, Derrick Lewis versus Cormier fight would probably draw more at this point, especially with all the attention that um, Derrick Lewis is riding off of. But I don't think it necessarily. Matter of fact, let me just kind of backtrack a little bit. I think it maybe it won't draw more than it, but I think as far as the risk versus reward, I think it's the better matchup for Cormier and probably for the UFC as well because Cormier versus Miocic is a high risk fight that that was a, like a very low reward. Because it's not, not going to draw probably even over 800,000 views or 800,000 pay-per-view buys. But it's going to be a big, important fight with a lot of legacy on at stake. But as far as the, the financial side of things, I don't think it's the smart move. Whereas Derrick Lewis versus Cormier probably has a chance to draw just as, as much um, um, attention, draw just as, as much um, money, especially off Derrick Lewis having that performance he did on the card that he did. I just don't think it's going to happen as soon as people are trying to hint at it. It might happen. Like they say, UFC 230. 230 is too quick. It's like November 6th. Cormier's still hands still kind of messed up. And Derrick Lewis is not going to rebound from that fight and try to fight in a title fight that soon. Especially trying to headline a car that can't really have a, like a, keep a headline. Like that UFC 230 car can't keep a headline. It's like losing one fight, adding one fight, this, that. So it's definitely not going to headline that card if it does happen. And then, um, 
even in the December, I doubt I have. I think Derrick Lewis is going to need at least two months of training camp before he even fights Cormier. I think Cormier is going to need at least another month to re- like re- um, pretty much rest his hand up, let it recover. So I don't think that fight happening until, if it does happen, until the beginning of January. And I doubt it will happen because I think Cormier really wants to fight Brock Lesnar and maybe John Jones or Alexander Goosen and, and then retire. So I think that's what it's looking like. But who knows? People are always talking. But as far as this hypothetical matchup, if it does happen somehow before the year ends or maybe at the beginning of, the, of 2019, I think Derrick Lewis actually has a, sh- a shot. He has a shot against anybody in MMA and in, in MMA because of that knockout power and how unpredictable he is. So he has a shot against anybody in MMA. Let me let me start saying in. Am I saying in or in? But anybody in the octagon, any of these MMA fighters, he has a shot against any of these MMA fighters, no matter how good they are. He always has that puncher shot. But I think I definitely would not pick him against Cormier. Cormier has too many tools and. I think he could, he could definitely implement his wrestling and make it a pretty sh- easy night for himself. That's also another reason why I think that matchup might happen because it could be an easy matchup where he could just get a takedown and pretty much just win off the takedown, probably get a submission or win with some ground and pound and then be able to re- like get a title defense then rebound and go down without really getting injured in the fight. But it's never that guaranteed that you're going to go out and fight and not get injured. So it's always stuff that can happen. He can always get caught, but I think of the matchup... I think he's more likely to get injured against Stipe Maocic than he is to get injured against Derek Lewis. So, like, monetary-wise and as far as him trying to rebound real quick, that matchup makes the most sense other than a Stipe or something else at heavyweight. I think that's the most, the fight makes the most sense. But that's about all I got to say for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and come back for more videos. Peace.